everyone, Aaron Meister coming to you with IDI Distributors in Dallas, Texas. How many times have you been out in the field, in the middle of a job, almost done, and all of a sudden your gun goes down? Then you go clean it, you spend an hour, maybe even two hours, cleaning your gun, bad crossover, foam everywhere. You go back, you, you put it on, you start spraying again, and you're back down in the trailer five minutes later cleaning it. I want to take you through a little test that I like to do on a, on a brand new gun or a gun that I just got done cleaning. It's, it's the only thing, the only way that I'll run a gun after I've cleaned it. It'll make me feel all warm and fuzzy about going back out, putting on my spray hose, and being successful. So what typically happens is you pull the trigger and you let go and there's still chemical coming out. You, still, you see a fine mist of A or B side just missing out the front with the air. That problem right there is called a flood. There's two different, two really big types of problems that guns can have uh, with these chemicals. One's called a crossover, one's called a flood. A uh, crossover is when the one side gets completely plugged up and the other side fills that void. It, it takes the path of least resistance. You don't, it doesn't have anything else pushing against it, so it goes into the other parts. The problem that I'm talking about today is called a flood. A flood is when the chemical leaks around a seal. It leaks past the seal and gets into your actual air section and it'll back all the way up into the handle, it'll, it'll go over to the other side, start getting onto the, onto the parts uh, in, the, in the air section of the other side of the gun. It's just, it, it turns into a really bad deal. So what I'm gonna show you is there's six uh, surfaces on both sides of this mixing chamber that can cause the problem. And they're all within about a half inch of that mixing chamber. So what we need for this test is a freshly clean gun or a brand new one. I say a brand new gun because I've had them fail right out of the box. Um, mainly what happens, and I've, what I've noticed that happens, is they sit in the box for a long time, they're sitting there compressing, um, nothing's, it's not being used, no pressure's going in or out of it, it's just sitting there. And what happens is sometimes these O-rings flatten out on the parts. So I always test the brand new gun, and I always test the gun that I just recently built. But what we're going to need, we're going to need 100 pounds of air pressure, and Again, a freshly clean gun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook the airline up and I'm gonna open my safety like I was about to pull the trigger and spray. I'm gonna hover my hand over the top of these uh, check valves, mainly because when they do pop out, they always fly and land in the closest pile of dirt. Never fails. I'm not trying to hold them in, but again, you're gonna watch me pull the trigger rapid fire about 10 times and I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna wait about five to 10 seconds and if either one of these check valves pops out, it fails. If they stay in, it passes. I'm gonna do this multiple times to ensure it's actually failing or actually passing. Let's give it a go. Safety's off, hook up my air. That B-side's already working its way out. I'm gonna push it back in with the trigger held down. Let it go, rapid fire. Oh, there it went. That would have landed in a pile of dirt if we were on a table. See? It keeps popping up. Push it back in with the trigger pulled. Let it go again. Alright, there we go. We keep popping out. Alright, I'm going to get rid of that for a minute. So what this is telling me is that something on the B side is not sealing properly. Alright, we talked about six spots that can cause it. I'm going to go through with those real quick with you. So first thing. Let's take off that air cap. Pull off that retaining ring. And we're gonna go straight to this side seal. I'm gonna go through these six spots with you real fast. We have our flat surface on the face of the side, uh, face of the mixing chamber, that's one. Seal number two is gonna be the face of this uh, side seal. If, if either one of these pieces has a scratch on it, air can get right through it and go down into that piece, working its way back to those check valves. All right, next, this actual side seal O-ring. All right, so I'm gonna pop that out from the back, never pull it from the front. And I'm gonna look at this O-ring right here. If that O-ring has any trash on it, any sort of debris, any mix of scratches, I, I can see a scratch in that O-ring right there. I guarantee you that's, uh, that's probably the part that's causing it. Sealing surface number four is gonna be this little groove, this little lip right inside that side seal cartridge. If there's any trash and debris that gets built up in there, you need to scrape that out and clean it. Number five is going to be the first big O-ring on the side seal cartridge, right here. Again, look for any scratches, any debris, any chunks out of it. 
And then spot number six is going to be inside this chamber where this big O-ring seats, where that makes a seal. If there's any scratches, if you've ever taken a pick, a screwdriver, something really sharp and dug some foam out of there, you can scratch that housing up and that O-ring can never make a seal again. So it's always important to have spare parts, spare O-rings, spare pieces just sitting around waiting for you to use because this happens more often than you think. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw a whole new, brand new cartridge in there. Brand new side seal and everything, all right? I'm gonna throw that in. Put my ring back on. Put my cap back on. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Other times it can be as simple as pulling a piece out, blowing it off, putting it back in. Oftentimes you can actually transfer a little piece of dirt, a little piece of debris onto a seal and it won't let it, it won't make a seal. So blow it off, try it again. Oftentimes you can, you can get by with that. So here we go. I got my air. Hey, nothing's popping out yet. That's good, but we're gonna go through a round. All right, they're not popping out. I love you to see that. All right, that's a couple rounds. Got a good action back and forth. Nothing's popping out. I'm gonna say, let's go spray some foam, make some money. So remember, we're trying to ensure that chemical doesn't get to the wrong places in the gun. We have to keep in mind that this is a one-sided test. Air's pushing one way, chemical's pushing the other. Always understand it could pass one way and fail another but this is the way that I feel good about putting the gun back on this principle. If you like this, if you like this tip, share it. Send it to your buddies. Um, let's get the word out there. Let's help everybody solve their problems quicker. Gun problems are the worst, so we wanna get rid of those as quick as we can. Go check out IDI on YouTube. We have videos on equipment, materials, coatings, tips and tricks how to keep your machines running longer. Check us out. Again, I'm Aaron Meissner with IDI Distributors. Happy spring.